All right, hey everybody, welcome. My name is Adam and this is Adam Makes Beer. So this is a technique video where we're gonna talk about cold dry hopping and why do I cold dry hop? Where did I get those ideas from and different things like that. First of all, dry hopping is really just typically toward the tail end of fermentation or at the end of fermentation. At room temperature, people would add more hops to the fermenter to help pick up hop flavor, hop aroma. People always say that hop, dry hopping doesn't give a perception of bitterness, but I would contend that it helps to give a perception of balance, and that's kind of a polyphenol thing. Polyphenols contributing kind of a, maybe a little bit of a mouthfeel body thing, a little bit of a textural thing that helps contribute to balance in the beer that you're making. So that's what dry hopping is and that's why we do it. Typically people have dry hopped warm either toward the tail end of fermentation when there's still a little bit of sugar left to be fermented or kind of at the end. I am using a different approach that and I'm really taking, um, I'm, I've really been utilizing techniques from Scott Janish and his fantastic book and his blog, uh, the new IPA, his blog, scottjanish.com. You really need to check it out. It's, it's top level research for, for what we're trying to do when we're chasing these, this, this goal of improving our hot forward beers, right? We ended up running into a problem. Brewers ended up running into this problem called hop creep. And some of the things I'm gonna talk about hop creep are a little bit questionable. Apparently there's still some things up in the air. There's a line of thinking that says the way that hop processors were handling and processing hops, as that process changed, it led to problems on our side as far as hop creep goes. As craft brewers, what we're looking for primarily out of hops, and especially in IPA and other things like that, is big fat hop aroma and flavor, right? And so what hop producers started doing for us was they started kilning hops or drying hops at lower and lower temperatures. Some people say that potentially dropping that temperature changed some various things with the hops that we're actually adding into our fermenter late in the process. I know there's, this stuff is up in the air, the research is still up in the air on this, but end result is this. Hop creep is essentially a second, a non-wanted secondary fermentation that happens. So you can have a beer that is completely fermented out. Let's say for argument's sake, it stopped at 10, 10, 10, 12. You dry hop it and then fermentation kicks up again. What I do to prevent that from happening with my hot forward beers is I dry hop cold, okay? I'm not dry hopping at ambient uh, or room temperatures or at fermentation temperatures. Typically the ale yeast that I'm using for this is juice from harvest and I ferment that beer anywhere between 68 up to 71 degrees later, later in process. So what I will do is when I dry hop cold is I will drop that beer once it's completely finished. Fermentation is finished, I'm past diacetyl, so diacetyl has been absorbed, diacetyl kind of being a buttery aroma, flavor. Uh, that, can, that can be on the palate and on the nose. Once we're through that, I will drop the temperature of the tank down to 58 degrees. I will then harvest all of the yeast off of that, whether it be for another, uh, another beer that I'm harvesting and, and repitching that yeast onto or just playing that yeast going down the drain. So I get that, that tank relatively yeast free and then I dry hop. The idea is, is with the yeast primarily gone and below the temperature at which yeast typically wants to operate, you can avoid some of these hot creep issues. Now, let me say this, I do can beer, we can Sabo, our IPA, but we don't have a massive footprint and it's not going like all over the country, we're not regional or anything like that. Sometimes what can happen is people can put out a beer on, onto the shelf and that re-fermentation will actually start in the can and you can get diastole you can get you know you can get over carbonation or worse exploding containers things like that so what I do is I use this awesome dry hopping doser it's pressurizable this is the this is the cap for it this is a really heavy four inch valve that I can open and close when I'm brewing into a tank that has uh, that's gonna receive a dry hop I put this huge four inch butterfly clamp over top of the dry hop port 
and then I put a cap over top of that so that surface stays nice and clean still. And then when it's time to dry hop the beer, and for us, it's gonna be cold, and there's already gonna be a little pressure on the tank. I just come up, I pop the cap off this, I attach the dry hop doser, I start running CO2 through this, and then what you'll see is the lid, this big heavy duty cap, actually has an off gas. So I can push gas in into the vessel and then it comes out here, right? So I can actually purge it. So that means I can dry hop this tank utilizing this vessel, not really exposing it to atmosphere, different things like that. And it's also safer using having the valve there rather than just kind of opening the tank, dumping the hops in and hope you don't get kind of a beer geyser shooting out of it. Those are the measures that I'm taking to prevent hop creep. I am not saying that it is perfect, all right? There's still a lot of emerging science on this stuff. Let me know if what other techniques you have used. I know some breweries are just planning for the hop creep. They're, they're dry hopping still late in the process or earlier in the process and just letting it run, run its course. There's different things you can do. I would love to hear what you're doing, if you have experienced it, what it was like, anything like that. Questions, comments, all that stuff, please post them down below. Thanks so much, everybody. Bye.